Hello and welcome back to the channel from Larnaca, Cyprus. I came here from Lebanon and I left Lebanon earlier than I would have liked to because of the elections taking place in the country. I thought it best not to hang around uh, for those just in case there were any issues, though I hope everything is fine. And I'm staying here at a hostel, it's kind of a boutique hostel, 18 euros a night. And this is my second time in Cyprus, though the first time I've made a vlog here, because when I visited for the first time, it was in 2013. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's head down to the streets and I'll talk a little bit more about my plans for Cyprus and Larnaca, where I'm staying a mosque right next door to the hostel that I'm in. So the name of the hostel is called Lamat Hostel and it's one of the best I've ever stayed in. Here is the mosque right next door that used to be a church and as I said, this is all the old Turkish quarter and it feels like it. Many Turks and Muslims would have lived in this area before 1974 when the war started, which eventually led to the splitting of Cyprus. The northern third of the island is the unofficial Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, only recognized by Turkey. and. The southern two-thirds is Greek Cypriot Cyprus. But before, there were small Turkish and Muslim enclaves in towns like Larnaca across the island. But once the Green Line was established between the two sides, then the Turks and the Muslims went north and the Greeks and the Christians settled in the south and today it remains very much the same. So what am I doing in Cyprus? Well, as I mentioned, I left Lebanon because of the elections and I just looked at the cheapest flights from Beirut and to fly to Larnaca with Middle Eastern Airlines, which is a Lebanese airline, it was only around 50 pounds, including check luggage, and that was a good deal for me. As it's on the way to the country where I'm meeting my family for my dad's 70th birthday, as I have mentioned in previous vlogs, I will not reveal that country until the end of this trip, just to keep you in suspense. I thought while I'm here, I'll explore a bit of the island and show the Turkish side in the north, because it's kind of interesting. And Nicosia, the last divided capital in the world. Some nice streets around here and a church just across the road from where the mosque was by my hostel. Larnaca is quite a relaxed and small town that's more of a transit stop for many people, but this might be the number one attraction, the Church of St. Lazarus. It's a 9th century Byzantine church made of stone. And inside, I've heard it has this large gold icon stasis. So let's take a look and uh, see if it's impressive or not. So now inside, and the answer to that is an emphatic yes. There is this huge golden wall which separates the nave from the sanctuary, which is called an iconostasis, and it has lots of paintings of various saints and people, and this church is dedicated to Saint Lazarus himself, whose remains were at one point buried here. And 
It's a beautiful church, a mix of gold with the stone. So out of the church and as I said, I have visited Cyprus once before in 2013, which was to Ayanapa <laughs> for a lad's holiday. I was only 17 at the time and I went with three of my good friends, Aidan, Mario and Nick. Shout out to them if they are watching. And we had a blast, but it was by no means a cultural trip or any kind. We just did a lot of drinking, which many Brits do in Ayanapa and other parts of the island. You know, there is a crazy strip of clubs and bars in Ayanapa. It's kind of on the south eastern part of the island. You could say the foot of Cyprus. We had a great time though. We didn't even leave Ayanapa really apart from a trip to Nisi Beach, which is in the area. We did a couple bar crawls, a boat party, a beach party. We saw DJ Fresh live at the time. I can't really say I've seen much of Cyprus other than Ayanapa itself. So here we are by the seafront, right by Larnaca Fort. And Larnaca may not have the best or prettiest beaches, but it at least has something. The fort there was built by the Ottomans in 1625. And it looks similar to the church with its stone. It's nice to walk out on the beach here though. And it's interesting because you can't fly into the capital Nicosia because of its divided nature between the Turkish and Greek Cypriot part. Then you have to fly into either Paphos on the west coast of the island or to Larnaca here. But Larnaca in fact is a very laid back, sort of quiet town. And as I said, more of a transit stop for many people. Those that I've met in my hostel are only here for a day or two usually. They're either catching a flight home or they've just arrived and they're on their way to somewhere else like Ayanapa or Limassol or Paphos or wherever, or even Nicosia for those who want to see the interesting divide, which is where I'll be heading on the bus tomorrow. One thing that has impressed me a lot about uh, arriving here in Cyprus is just how clean and organized everything is. So I know that the southern part of the island is a member of the EU, but still the transportation system is very modern and convenient. From the airport, you can get a shuttle bus, number 425, which will take you right to the beach on the other side of Larnaca and it only costs two euros fifty which is very reasonable and it has wi-fi and the airport is also modern and well organized it's very clean in general walking around the streets here in Larnaca and to me Larnaca doesn't feel tacky in a touristy way or a kitsch way it actually feels a little bit boutique I don't know what the other tourist destinations aside from Ayanapa are like but there are a lot of nice restaurants and hotels around and fairly posh cafes and that kind of thing. It's not quite what I expected because I expected it to be perhaps a tiny bit tacky, but it's really not.
good morning and welcome back. I have now switched from my Canon M50 and my gimbal, the GN Crane Plus and Rode mic to my trusty little GoPro. I am leaving Larnaca this morning and heading north to the capital Nicosia and with all my bags and stuff it's just so much easier to film on my GoPro as I want to finish off this video by showing the journey and I'm currently walking through some of Larnaca's kind of renovated artisan streets which are pretty cool didn't get a chance to show them in last night's video. That's a nice bar right there. And while I make this journey, you can kind of already feel the complete different style of vlog. And if you've been watching my videos in the last six months, ever since the beginning of this year, really, you'll know I filmed a lot on my GoPro and done a lot of these style of videos which are easier to film because using this is it's more subtle. It's a tiny little thing. Whereas my big camera draws a lot of attention and is clunkier and takes more time to switch on and get the shot that I want. Whereas this, I can just press the button and I don't really miss a beat. I can catch what people say if they're talking to me. They don't feel uncomfortable as much when I'm filming them. When I have the big camera out, people always know before I even lift it up that I've got it with me, you know? Whereas this you can kind of keep close to your body and people don't really... They know you're filming but they don't really mind as much. So that's a big factor. So what I want to know from you in the comments below, I'd love your feedback on this as followers of mine who watch my videos. Is the GoPro quality such a drop-off that you find it a bit difficult to watch at times. The quality, of course, isn't as good as my Canon M50. However, what it does get is this great wide angle shot behind me. I'm only using the narrow setting, not even the wide or ultra wide setting, because they kind of produce a sort of uh, goldfish bowl effect, which I don't like. The narrow one is still wide enough for me, which is cool and it's something I really like. Whereas my Canon M50, as you'll have seen earlier on in the video, really high quality, but it doesn't quite get the wide shot of the background all the time, but it's still good. Another factor with the GoPro is the sound. You'll clearly notice the sound is nowhere near as good as when I use my Rode mic on my other setup. So, pros and cons. I think I'm going to continue to use this in more subtle environments. For example, when I get to Nicosia and I cross the border from Greek Cyprus to the Turkish side, I will be filming on this. But if I'm doing a video of the Mediterranean Sea or a beautiful location, like recently I went to Baalbek in Lebanon, then I feel like I have to use my good quality equipment because there's just no excuse not to use it as I don't need to hide from anybody and be subtle in any way. So appreciate your feedback on that. Let me know. And I will continue my walk to the bus station, show you the journey, let you know the prices from Larnaca to Nicosia. So I just walked all the way to the Larnaca Central Station where I arrived from the airport on the 425 bus and I went to the ticket office and asked for the intercity to Nicosia and the woman tells me it doesn't leave from here it leaves from the beach in front of McDonald's and you pay on the bus so now I'm walking there and I'm imagining it's just sort of a stop or something let's find out so here we are this is the stop except McDonald's is way over down that way and I walked all the way down there thinking that this wasn't the place there wasn't a bus here when I first walked past it and then I went in front of McDonald's and there was nothing there 
and then I realized it must have been this kiosk here and I came all the way back but uh, I still have to wait half an hour before the Nicosia one this one's going to Limassol Cyprus is capital, Nicosia, and I'm walking to my accommodation. It is a 20 minute walk in the heat with my bags, but I can manage it. I could ask for a taxi, but I kind of want to show a little bit of the city at the end of this video just to give a taste for the next one the bus took just over an hour really not that long as i mentioned earlier nicosia is the last divided capital in the world and i'm in the greek cypriot side the un buffer zone is somewhere that way and it stretches along the entirety of the island I'm going to be heading left here so we will not see the zone I do not think the border with the sandbags and whatnot but we will save it for the next one and I will show it up close I think it is a little bit hotter here in Nicosia than of course on the coast we are in the interior of Cyprus, fairly central on the island. And so we don't have the cool breeze. We don't have the Mediterranean Sea to help us with the heat. And of course, being a city with lots of cars and buildings only makes it a few degrees warmer than some of the coastal towns. So I think I'm at my accommodation and I'm going to end things here. Check out the next video for a full tour of the Greek side of Nicosia. And then the one after will be me crossing the border to the Turkish side and showing the Turkish side of Nicosia as well. So I will see you on the next one. Cheers. Yeah.